right by the propane. Yeah. <laughs> This video is for entertainment purposes only. This project uses dangerous materials that should be treated with respect. Attempt at your own risk. Okay, to start off, you will need some unscented clay cat litter. You should be able to find this at your local dollar store. Potassium nitrate, which is found in most stump removers. The bottle we found was nine bucks. Powdered sugar, and something to grind your stump remover and kitty litter into a fine powder. A three quarter inch inside diameter PVC pipe, and a matching hardwood dowel to compact the rocket fuel ingredients. A hot glue gun, and I had some scrap balsa wood laying around that we fashioned into the rocket fins, but you can use cardboard or stiff paperboard. A hobby knife, some stiff paper to make the nose cone, and a mallet. You'll also need some sort of straight edge to cut straight lines, a marker, tape measure, and a scale to weigh the ingredients. Finally, you'll need a drill and quarter inch drill bit, a pen, or a straw. First off, Grind some of the stump remover into a fine powder. If you're not going to use it for anything else, go ahead and grind the whole bottle to save for a later project. Now go ahead and mix together a ratio of 65 to 35 stump remover and powdered sugar by weight. So that is 65 grams of stump remover and 35 grams of powdered sugar for a 100 grams total. Make sure you mix it together thoroughly until well combined. This will be your rocket fuel. Next, grind a couple scoops of the kitty litter into a fine powder. The finer the better, as it will compact down further, making for a good seal. This will make sure all the pressure buildup from the rocket fuel ignition goes where we want to. Measure and cut a one foot length of the PVC pipe. That's roughly 30.5 centimeters for the rest of the world. Assault your pipe to make sure the dowel will fit down the entire length. If it doesn't, go ahead and sand it so it will. Mark the dowel at one foot, the same length as your pipe. Then, from that mark, measure down three quarters of an inch, 2.5 inches, and a final three quarters of an inch. Start with small scoops of kitty litter. Remember, it's always easier to add more than it is to take it out. Pack down with a dowel after each scoop until you reach the first mark. Don't be afraid to give it some good hard wax. We recommend doing this on a hard surface to really compact each layer. Once you've reached your first mark, you're ready to add the fuel. Using the same method as with the kitty litter, scoop in the fuel until you reach the next mark. Follow this up with the last layer of kitty litter. Now take your drill with quarter inch drill bit and measure the bit so that it sticks out three and a quarter inches. This will ensure you don't drill through the top kitty litter plug. Align the bit as centered as possible. This will help your rocket to fly straight and the fuel to burn evenly. And don't go too fast as too much friction from the drill could ignite the fuel. Using a straight edge, Cut some fins out of a sturdy but lightweight material. We cut this first one out and used it as a template for the rest. To ignite our rocket safely, we're going to be making a slow burning fuse. Mix together some of our existing rocket fuel and just a little bit of water. Mix thoroughly until you have a paste. Cut a strip of paper towel, about a half inch wide and six inches long. Combine with the paste until thoroughly saturated. Twist up and put on a baking sheet to dry in the oven. We found out later that it helps to have a 90 degree bend about an inch from the end. You'll see why later. Preheat your oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, 121 degrees Celsius. Once your oven is ready, bake your fuses for 15 minutes or until dry. The fuse will stiffen up a bit after it cools. Now in the meantime, while your fuse is drying, go ahead and hot glue your fins on. We found out the hard way that the glue doesn't like to stick to the slick plastic, so we recommend roughing up the surface where you're going to glue with some sandpaper. Take extra care to glue them on as straight as possible. It also helps to mark a line on beforehand. Leave about a half inch gap from the bottom of the rocket. If you can retrieve your rocket, you can repack the engine and fly it again later. Take your pen or straw and cut a length of one to two inches 
and glue it in a straight line on the side of the rocket. This will keep the rocket on the guide rod, which you'll see later. We used a launch pad from a commercially available rocket kit, but you can use any piece of sturdy wire shoved in the ground. Take your stiff paper and curl into a cone, hot gluing the seam. Trim the cone to where it just fits over the end of the PVC pipe, then glue this into place. Go ahead and take your rocket outside or into a well-ventilated area and spray paint it. We recommend a highly visible color, that way, later, you'll find it. You can see now why we bent the fuse prior to drying. Initially, we used some paper towel as wadding to wedge the fuse into place, but found it was unnecessary and actually worked better without it. Set up the launch pad. Slide the rocket onto the guide rod and you're ready to launch. Make sure you find a safe and legal place to fire your rocket. I happen to live on some property, so that wasn't an issue. Make sure the rocket is aimed at a safe direction and stand at a safe distance, as this is a dangerous rocket. It is a rocket after all. It's not rocket science. It's just rocket science. Oh. There we go.